This is a quick demonstration of how to copy code, say from MATLAB or Arduino, into Microsoft Word on Windows 10. Suppose that we have a, an Arduino program. This is a very simple example. Not The code itself is not important. If we open up Microsoft Word, notice that on the MCAC system in 2018, when this video is being created, uh, Microsoft Word 2016 is the default. We're going to open up a blank document and we get this display. So the simple idea here is to copy. So I could select with the mouse or I could hit uh, Control A for all, Control C for copy, and come over to here to the code. Um, just to be safe, I'm going to hit return a couple times. Notice that the uh, paragraph display icon is shown here. That may not be the case in your computer. I'll show you how to turn that on and off in just a second. So once again, I've copied my code from here. I want to paste it into Word. And it looks pretty bad, actually. I'm going to turn off the paragraph display marks for now. So hit the Home tab, come over and turn that off. Even without the paragraph display, the end of paragraph markers, it looks pretty bad. It's spread out, and the font doesn't look like the font in the Arduino application. The font is a little less important, but we'll get to that. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to hit return a couple times, so that allows me some space later to select other paragraphs. First thing I want to do is fix the line spacing, and that's available via the paragraph formatting features available at the home. So I'm going to hit home. Notice that the home ribbon just kept going away. I hit home here. If it doesn't stick, come over to the far right and put that pin in there, and that will uh, keep the ribbon there. If you don't like it, you can hit this little carrot and make it go away again. The uh, ribbon is organized into zones, clipboard, font, and paragraph. Over here in the bottom right corner, and most of these zones have this little little tiny little icon that really opens up what we want. The paragraph icon, this little paragraph thing. And uh, you can read all the details here, but the spacing between uh, paragraphs is controlled by before and after quantities. I'm going to take after and make it zero. Notice that the before and after parameters on your computer might be different. I hit OK, and now the line spacing is reasonable. The next thing I probably should do is fix the font. Notice that the O's and the I's take up different widths, and that's generally a good idea when we're formatting documents for text that we want to read normally. But for code, we want a monospace font where each character, regardless of whether it's an I or an O, has the same width. Courier is the, um, well, let's do Courier New. And notice now that everything's a bit more spaced out, but the characters, individual characters, all take up the same width. So that's a good way to format programming code so that the indentation, if you indent by space, will be equal. So far, we've got a bit of code that looks like it does, more or less, without the color that, that it does inside your code here. If you look carefully, you'd see that this is a monospace font that INT takes up the same amount of horizontal space as I space equals. So we could stop here, and this would allow us to have a Word document where the ordinary text, say, here is my code, is in one font and with one sort of formatting and the uh, code itself. But I think we'd like to go a little further. One of the important features of Word that's somewhat obscure but really powerful is the use of styles. So let's suppose that I do this over and over again, and I get tired of having to go to the paragraph of tool and change the line spacing, and then go to the font, change the font. I can create a style that will allow me to rapidly reformat my code. I'm going to reveal the style panel here. This little tiny triangle opens up this additional panel with a series of default styles that have predefined fonts and paragraph arrangements. So I'm going to select my text here, come down to the bottom and create a new style, and I'm going to call that style code, just simply code. Uh, notice that it is sort of selected the 
uh, font that is, I'm being used at the time, Courier New. And let's just uh, take this as OK. Now, let's say I come in later and I've got another Arduino program. I'm going to grab this uh, program here and assume it's a different one for now, just for simplicity. And I just did a command V for paste. And once again, I'm confronted with my uh, hideous default formatting. But because I've defined this style called code, I can just come in here and bam, in one step, reapply all the formatting information from my previous example. So this is pretty nice. I would suggest you learn about styles and maybe create a template for homework assignments that would allow you to do this operation quickly because the code style that you would define in your template document would remain. We can take this a little step further. Suppose I wanted to indent my code block slightly to the left. Uh, the ruler here allows me to do some of that formatting, and maybe um, your rulers wouldn't be viewed uh, visible, so you can go to the View tab and you can uh, click Ruler on and off. So you might need to do that to make this next step feasible. So let's suppose I just want to indent this some. If I decided to redefine this style here, it's like, oh, this is, this is now the way code should be displayed, I can come over, redefine the style by just saying Update to match selection. And look, my other bit of code down here also changed its appearance because the appearance of this block down here is defined as being formatted by the code style. So if I update the code style in one place, all other instances of that code style are updated. Now sometimes we get confused like where, what's what. If I click here in the middle, I go back to the normal style. And if I, re, uh, if I turn my paragraph markers on, I can sort of see that here. So these three paragraphs are blank in between. Those are normal. I click here. These are formatted as code. Now you can go crazy with this. You can change all sorts of features of the style. Just for example, let's say I wanted to um, change this to put a box around it. I go to here. Now, I can't update it because it's I don't have the new style, but I could click Modify. So at a later date, I can modify this style. And under the Format, this little tab down here, I can pick up the Border option. And I can just say Box. And I say OK. And when I hit OK, I will have redefined the style. And both cases are updated. So you can see how having a predefined style 1 streamlines your effort at inserting code or making standardized changes, and two, allows to have a very uniform appearance throughout a document. So I encourage you to experiment with styles. There's many more applications than just formatting code. You can change the appearance of your reports to have a certain style, uh, equations, tables, figures, captions, M many, many parts of engineering documents have a standardized appearance and using styles is one way to achieve that uniform appearance.